So, tools. Drift align. Okay. So it tells us slew to near the meridian and the equator. Alright. So you can actually do that here, but rather than inner values, I'm just going to do it using my planetarium software. So this green line here is the meridian, and the brown line is the uh, solar system plane. So that's where we want to be somewhere, and I want to be... I don't want to cross the meridian while we're doing this, so I'm just going to pick something here. Um, we can pick Deneb. Uh, actually, let me go a little higher. You know, the higher in this... I don't want to get too far away, but the lower you are, you know, the harder it is to auto-guide because the, the at, there's more turbulence in the atmosphere. You're going through more atmosphere. So, I've selected Sadal Sud. I don't know how you pronounce it. Hit Control One. Slowing to target. Now this is on the other side of the meridian from where we were pointing, so my mount is going to do a meridian flip. So if you watch where the it's going to go back through true north and then come around on the other side. All right, so we can. Watch that. If I pick the right window here, there's the Malin cam. I can't have both of those open at the same time. So here it is coming down. Slow complete. So now it's pointing uh, directly south and just at some, some elevation here. So that's where we want to be. So we go back over here and we can say drift. I think it must have auto-selected a star there, but I... Drifting, okay. So, a couple things going on right now. There's this purple circle, and that's telling you how far off your polar alignment is. And then you've got trend lines for deck and RA and you need to pay attention to the deck trend line. Your colors are probably different. I've set my deck to be green. And we talked earlier about the profile. Uh, one of the things that you can do in your profile is put these notes in here uh, because there's no way for PhD2 to know whether your you know flips things or inverts them and, and which way your how your scope, your mount is configured, you know, like I pointed out during the day that my, my Sirius scope, the, the uh, azimuth knobs are on the front and on the, on the uh, big Orion mount, the HDX110, they're on the back and that probably flips the, the way that they work. So, they give you this little place here to make notes. And so I've written here, by figuring it out by trial and error, that if the deck slope, that's this green line here, if it's pointing down, then I need to turn the, the azimuth knob on the west side of the mount. I'm sitting behind the mount, it's pointing north, so uh, the knob is on the left of the mount. And that's why I said west and east instead of left and right. And then if the green line was going up, then I would be turning the knob on the east side of the mount, which is on the right side for us tonight. So you let it drift here for a while, and then when it seems like the purple circle has stabilized, you press adjust. 
and then our goal is to move that star in the middle to the purple circle and you gotta move slow because you're only taking two second exposures now you ask that's a circle how do you know which way to move it well that's why we've written down you know which is the correct way because if the circle gets bigger after we did the adjustment instead of smaller then we moved it the wrong direction um, I guess I should mention I think you can see if I reach in here you can just see my hand at the bottom of the screen there let me blow this up right there you can see the knob in front of my hand that secures the mount head to the mount. You may need to loosen this ever so slightly in order to use the uh, azimuth knobs. There's a um, some plastic between the mount tripod and the mount head uh, so that things can slide and some people put even Teflon tape on there to make it a little more slick but just you know loosen that a little bit and then remember when you're done to, to tighten everything back up again hopefully without moving anything okay so back to here we want to see how well we did so we can press drift again and we're waiting for the purple circle to come up and destabilize hopefully it'll be smaller than it was and the slope of the line will be flat or if we went too far it'll be sloping up and we can compensate for that alright so I'm gonna say that it's settling on sloping down. The circle is pretty small but we're going to go ahead and try to do a little bit better. Wow. That's a pretty small circle. So moving the west knob ever so slightly. Now I need to go back a little bit. And when I say back, it means you have to push with the other knob. So you have to back off the knob you were turning and then turn the other knob to push back. And then when I finish an adjustment, what I do is I snug both knobs down to hold it in place. Okay, I'm going to drift. All right, <laughs> that's pretty good. You know, it's jumping around a little bit, but it's, uh, you know, on both sides and it's pretty flat and the circle is very small. Um, so, I mean, you can, you know, keep working on it. Uh, I'm gonna, for the purpose of uh, demonstration here, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the altitude adjustment. So we click altitude here and now it says slew to a location near the equator and the eastern or western horizon all right so let's go back to stellarium now the horizon my uh, west horizon is here behind the house so let's a nice shooting star in my planetarium software. Uh, let's go to the east. So, again, here's the equator and towards the east. Um, let's just pick. It's not super critical that you be right on it. So, we're going to moving to target. Do our meridian flip again.
So you'll see the scope will come in from this side, or maybe it'll come down. Here it comes. Moving in deck along an RA line. Slow complete. Okay, let's go back to PHD2.